What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're out in the garage and I'm getting some of my stuff ready to go for Lake Havasu. Today's Sunday. Normally I'd be out on the water trying to catch some fish and put some content together for you guys. But today it's like 100 degrees outside and I didn't feel like going. And uh, I got some stuff to do to get ready for Havasu. And in today's video I'm going to talk to you about my spinning rod setups. I got to change out some of the line on some of my spinning reels. So I figured I would talk to you guys in today's video about why I do what I do with my spinning rods and why I use braid to fluoro. There's a lot of controversy with the braid to fluoro or should you go straight fluoro or whatever. Today's video is all about why I choose to use the braid to fluoro card. <laughs> content in today's video is going to have links down in the description. Those links are affiliate links to omniafishing.com. I'm an affiliate to that website, to that business, which basically means they give me links that I can use in my content. And anybody that clicks on anything, goes to their website and buys anything through those links, earns me a commission. It's a great way to support me, great way to support the channel. So a lot of the line and stuff that we're going to be talking about in today's video will be linked down in the description. Anybody that goes to the site from those links and buys anything will earn me a commission. So what I'm doing out here in the garage today is I'm taking off my old 10 pound test Seaguar Smackdown flash green braid and I like that green color because it really helps me see it when it's sitting on top of the water and stuff like that. And then I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on why I choose this braid and then also why I like the braid to fluorocarbon for my spinning setups. So one of the first reasons why I choose braid to fluorocarbon is because it really saves you a lot of money over the course of a season, over the course of a year with your fishing. If you spool up fluorocarbon on an entire spinning reel, you're going to end up getting about half of that spool usable because once you get too low you're not gonna be able to cast as well and you're gonna start having issues a lot of times with fluorocarbon you're gonna have a lot of memory as well so when you're casting that spinning reel out and reeling it back in you're getting line twists and everything and then eventually that kind of that reel just kind of explodes you have this big bird's nest coming off your spool and you basically have to cut everything off and start over that doesn't happen when you're using braided line so you're gonna be able to tie shorter fluorocarbon leaders to your braided line it's going to save you a ton of money you're not going to have that line twist or anything like that and it's just it's really going to save you a lot of money at the end of the year So what you just saw me do was take this 10 pound test cigar fluorocarbon and I use it as a backing on that spinning reel. Now you could use pretty much whatever line you want for the backing because that's never going to hit the water. The reason I needed to do that is because if I try to put this 10 pound cigar braid on there, which is the four pound equivalent, I'm going to have a whole bunch of room left on my spool after I run out of line on this spool right here. So what I did is I added this fluorocarbon backing to it so that way it's going to fill up some of the space on my spool and then that way when I put all this on there it's going to basically leave me right where I want to be on my spool and the reason that's important as well is because if you go direct braid to the actual metal spool on your reel sometimes that braid can slip that's going to cause you to have issues on hook sets when you're fighting fish and stuff like that so whenever you're using braid having some type of a mono or fluorocarbon backing will help you out to avoid any slipping or anything like that and then here in a second we're going to put this 10 pound test braid on so another reason why i choose braid to fluorocarbon leaders with my spinning equipment is due to the sensitivity braid is so much more sensitive than mono and fluorocarbon and when you're fishing those finesse tactics which you're doing a lot with spinning rods and you're fishing deep you're fishing lightweight baits so you want to be able to do everything you can to feel the bottom to feel all those bites come through and braid is going to give you the most sensitivity of any of the lines out on the market right now so that's why i choose to go with that braid to that fluorocarbon leader i feel like i'm getting the best of both worlds i'm getting the sensitivity due to the lack of stretch in the braid but then i'm also getting the invisibility of the fluorocarbon when i put that leader on there so now that I got the backing, the fluorocarbon backing on my spinning reel, it's time to put the braid on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a uni to uni knot and tie my braided line to the fluorocarbon backing on there and then I'll start spooling that braid or start reeling that braid onto the spinning reel itself. <music> So if 
you were paying attention to that last clip, you might have seen me use some of this blue masking tape and putting it on the spool where that knot that combined the fluorocarbon to the actual braid. And the reason I use that little piece of tape is I like that it flattens the tag ends that are created from the knot that connects the lines. That way they're not poking through, they're not messing up the way the the braid's gonna lay on the spool because that knot's there. I just feel like it helps even everything out. I don't know if it's the best idea, but I've been using it like that for years, and I just like how, how it keeps everything nice and smooth, nice and even on the spool. using that braided fluorocarbon is because it gives me those high visibility colors like that flash green that I'm using with this Seaguar Smackdown. Um, I've used another bright green color when I was using Sunline braid and then I've also used a white color in the past as well. Um, I just like having that high visibility color up on top of the water because if those fish bite it real soft and maybe it's one of those weird situations where you don't feel it in the rod, you can see that line just skip right across the water and you know that you got a fish, you can reel up, feel that fish tug and then set the hook and start fighting that fish. When you're fishing with fluorocarbon, I've found that I can't see that line, which is the whole point behind the fluorocarbon. But when it's right there at the rod tip or right there as it's like falling onto the water, I like being able to see that bright visibility, that high visibility color, so that way I can detect even the subtlest of bites by just paying attention to my line. So I've been able to get this line all spooled up onto my Daiwa Tatula right here. I uh, really like that reel. Got it on the Lux 7'2 medium mod spinning rod from Six Sense. Really good rod as well. It's one of my favorite spinning rods. And uh, next thing I need to do is tie my fluorocarbon leader on here and then I'll be putting on one of these small little finesse baits that I'm going to be planning to practice with out on Havasu. Alright, so I have my fluorocarbon leader tied on now. So my knot for my braid is right here. Fluorocarbon's on the other side as you guys can see. This is a uni to uni knot. That's what I always use for my fluorocarbon leaders. Um, this is probably about 10 foot of a leader. And then I have it down to this ball head jig. It's a dual mold ball head jig. And uh, what I'll be putting on here is one of these swim baits that I poured up. The Havasu fish really like that chartreuse color. Pretty much any of the desert fish really like that chartreuse color. So I poured up some of these in the new ripper mold and um, I'll be out there practicing with this guy. This guy right here should catch them for sure. But that's what I use for my, my knot, my connection knot for the braided fluorocarbon is that uni to uni. And then we just have a basic palomar down to the actual ball head jig. So I've thrown a lot of different braids over the years with the braided fluorocarbon leader on my spinning equipment. And I've really come to love this Seaguar Smackdown stuff. I'm not sponsored by Seaguar or anything like that. This is just something that I tried out myself. I really like that it has this, it's got a little bit of a waxy feel on it. Comes off the spool really good. I feel like I get really, really far cast with it. It also doesn't fuzz up a lot. There's other braids on the market when you use them for a while, it really fuzzes up. That green will fade over time, but I don't think it's that big of a deal because basically what I'm trying to accomplish is just being able to see a little bit of that movement out of that line on the water and it keeps its color well enough that I don't have any issues being able to see it on top of the water, which is exactly what I'm going for. I feel like it ties really well to the fluorocarbons, which is really important because you don't want that not to be breaking when it shouldn't. Um, I just have, I've, over time I've really leaned towards the braided fluorocarbon stuff and I'm really happy with the Seaguar Smackdown. There'll be a link to it down in the description of today's video. Guys, the braided fluorocarbon thing is somewhat controversial. Some people prefer to go straight fluorocarbon. My preference is to use that braided fluorocarbon for the reasons that I talked about in today's video. It's going to save you money. You're going to get that sensitivity. I think you're going to get further cast. You're going to be able to have that high visibility color. It's going to help you detect all those bites that you may not be getting or may not be seeing when you're using that fluorocarbon. So if you're, this is something you guys want to try out, maybe give this Smackdown a try. I'll have a link to it down in the description of today's video. It will be an affiliate link that's going to earn me a commission. I'll also put a link to the rod, the reel that we were talking about, and I'll put some other different types of line as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed learning about why I use this braid to fluorocarbon. I think it'll be helpful for, helpful for you guys, especially with your spinning rods and your finesse setups. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. If you want to subscribe to the channel, now would be a perfect time to do so. And if you want to watch more of my content, make sure to click on one of the videos that are up on the screen right now. And I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.